I'm going to show you what we said we couldn't live without. Here's our list. 91% of people said they couldn't live life without a car. 70% said home air conditioning. 49% said cell phone. I thought that would actually be higher, by the way. 64 TV, 33 cable TV, 29 high-speed internet. 5% of people, whatever drugs they were taking, decided their life would not continue <laughs> without a flat-screen television. Food didn't make the list. No one will know the difference between a real Gucci bag and a fake Gucci bag. And she said, yes, they can. And I said, how? She said, stitching. I said, $1,450 worth of stitching. She said, yes. I said, no one will know. She said, it doesn't matter if anyone knows. That's neuromarketing right there. In other words, my wife bought the Gucci bag, paid 30 times the price of a functional equivalent, <laughs> not because of the benefits, AKA stitching, but because of the story she tells herself about why she needs a Gucci bag. You have at one level of a purchasing decision, the stitching. That is, we have 24 hour free business center. We have 450 hotels, including one in Russia. You know, we got all this sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, the real reason people buy is the story we tell ourselves. 30 years ago, they said in business, you only had to be one of these three things. You either had to be really, really fast, or really, really good, or really, really cheap. Think about McDonald's when it launched. What was McDonald's on this list when it first kind of got its critical mass? Cheap, no, fast is what it was. It actually wasn't cheap to begin with. It was more expensive than eating at home, but you could get it really quickly. The whole foundation was built on, in fact, they found it a thing called fast. But then what started to happen is other people could promise you fast food. So McDonald's said, oh, we'll give you fast food, but we'll also make it. The belief of the entrepreneurs that were sitting behind that franchise was, if we give you well-priced food that's fast, we don't actually have to make it very, at least not healthy anyway. Does that make sense? In other words, they were prepared as entrepreneurs to trade off between these three things. In other words, we are locked in this belief system that says we trade off between these three things. And I want to put you that the market has changed for Ever. McDonald's globally, for the first time in history, started to lose money. Not their real estate business, their operations, the food ops part of the business. So they responded with a variety based menu, kind of more of the same stuff, didn't go so well. So then they launched a salad menu, which in Canada started in the east and has slowly kind of moved its way west. Phenomenal success all over the planet. Millions and millions of customers within the first month of the launch of a salad option on the menu flocked back to McDonald's. Yet hardly any of them ate salad. <laughs> Millions of customers, oh, McDonald's have got salad, I'm going back to McDonald's, didn't eat it. But why was it so successful? Because now they could say they ate salad. Now think about that. If you got caught leaving McDonald's, you go, no, 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 no. I ate the salad. It's kind of like those people that carry their yoga mats with them, and you know they haven't done yoga in about seven years, right? In other words, if there's one thing we've worked out, it's that people do not make rational decisions. Great entrepreneurs stitch a great story. Now I have three basic things I get to invest in my decision-making pro process. What are those three? Money. What else? Time. What's the third one? I'm going to call it energy. Providing the price is fair. It doesn't have to be the cheapest. I will not lower prices. I mean, I'm just 
totally, right? You get the story right, you don't have to lower prices. Don't do that, you're going broke if you do that, right? You know, as long as you're fast, you've probably been told that at four million conferences. I think the real learning here is, how much energy do you require your customer to invest in the process? How easy do you make it for them to make a decision? So, that's positive energy. That's negative energy. The business traveler, when deciding where to stay, is already pretty grumpy. Would that be a fair statement? They're not going for anything fun. So where do they start? Where does their, big, their experience start on the energy scale? Negative, right? So they're down there all depressed about, oh, I want to go home and oh, what am I staying, you know? So they're down here, right? Then they have to book it themselves and they've now not got corporate credit cards so they're going to put it on their own credit card and wait one month while their company trades that money on the short-term money market and they have to pay interest on the, on the bill. Winge, 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 winge. And then they finally meet the staff at the front and all of a sudden it's now a positive energy experience. Now, if it's a negative one, they're never coming back. So let's assume that doesn't happen. A leisure traveler is a whole different process, right? A leisure traveler, in fact, is more excited about what it's going to be like until they have to start booking it. And there's four million reviews and, oh, your two dollars different to the one down the road. Oh, I wonder whether two dollars really means anything. And so they get depressed after they decide to make these travel. And then they have the big day and they're rocking, right? Here is your job. Sharp is in the mind. Easy is in the effort, which you could also say is in, let's say, the body. And this is like the heart. Story, stitching story sort of stuff, yeah? He said to the journalist, I'm not in the motorcycle industry. The guy said, dude, you're Harley Davidson. You started the motorcycle. He didn't actually call him dude. He called him Mr. Tilling. You're not in the You started the motorcycle industry. He said, yeah, yeah, we sell motorcycles. He said, but what we really sell is the ability for a 43-year-old accountant to dress in black leather, drive through a small country town, and have people be afraid of him. You have equally as powerful a story. Adopt the stitching that helps you tell that story.